What's the word, y'all? How good of a defender is Rudy Gobert? Now, that feels like a stupid question, right? The man has four DPO Wild Wars that is tied for the most DPO Wilds in the history of basketball. But I feel like if you polled 100 NBA fans about how good of a defender is Rudy Gobert, you're gonna get different answers. And that feels crazy, right? If a player wins four scoring titles, there's no question on whether or not he can score the basketball. If a person wins four championships, there's no question on whether or not he's a winner. But Rudy Gobert is different. And today we're gonna tackle that question. Hell, I mentioned if you polled 100 NBA fans, you could probably poll 100 NBA players and the conversation is gonna be different because well, amongst his peers, Rudy Gobert was rated the most overrated player in basketball. Shaquille O'Neal says that Rudy Gobert is an overrated defender. Udonis Haslam says Minnesota should limit Rudy Gobert's minutes in the playoffs in order to win. Kendrick Perkins said he regrets voting for Rudy Gobert when it comes to DPOY. Paul Pierce suggests bringing Rudy Gobert off the bench. And the king of the Rudy Gobert hate club, Draymond Green thinks that Minnesota should give Kyle Anderson more minutes and maybe bring Rudy Gobert off the bench. And those are just some of the examples I found with two minutes of Googling. <laughs> He is not well liked in the association. Personally, I believe that Rudy Gobert is one of the best defenders I've ever seen with my own two eyes. So I've been a supporter for the majority of his career. I also watched a ton of Minnesota Timberwolves this season. They were my most watched team this year. But I do think that four DPOYs is a lot for Rudy Gobert. If I'm ranking his DPOYs, this season was probably the weakest. I feel like what he was doing with that Jazz team was otherworldly, but that's another conversation. And sometimes to look at awards and accolades, it's like a story of a generation, right? And it does feel weird that when we talk about this generation of defenders, guys like Bam Adebayo, Anthony Davis don't have any hardware to prove that they were also some of the best defenders of this, of this era. Either way, we could talk more about that later in the video. What we're going to do to watch the film, to figure out if Rudy Gobert is a great defender or not, we're going to watch two random Rudy Gobert games. The first one will be in the regular season and the second one will be in the postseason. Because even though I'm a Rudy Gobert fan, I could recognize that a lot of the stuff that Rudy Gobert does defensively is so valuable in the regular season and it also loses some of that value once we get to the postseason. Now, Rudy Gobert played in 76 games a season. We're going to hit this random number generator and we're going to watch the 13th game he played this year. In his 13th game, please be a good game, was against the New York Knicks. It was a 17-point game. But regardless, we're going to watch all of Rudy Gobert's minutes, which in this case is 26 minutes. And we're going to try to figure out good defense versus bad defense and so on and so forth. We'll do that exact same thing randomly for one of the postseason games. But let's, let's tune into this random November game for the 2023 season. Remember, our goal is to watch Rudy Gobert and like highlight him. Of course, we got to watch the entire court and everything that's going on. We are specifically highlighting Rudy Gobert. So here's a pick and roll from the Knicks. He rejects drop coverage. That's what Rudy Gobert is going to do. And he drops back to prevent the roll. And it's really Jaden McDaniels that has to recover. And Jalen McDaniels does a little bit late. And Jalen Brunson makes him pay. Now, with the drop coverage, that's what Rudy Gobert has played almost exclusively in his career. And, well, a guy like Jalen Brunson or a prime Chris Paul to have a crazy mid-range jump shot, those are the dudes that's going to make you pay the most on mid-range uh, on uh, drop coverage. But the drop coverage is to prevent corner three-point shots and also to prevent the roll. Interesting, though, because I don't care about the offensive side of the ball, so I will just skip past all the offensive possessions. Another screen from Mitchell Robinson coming. McDaniels is late. He can't recover. And Brunson takes it all the way to the rim and missed because of the contest of Rudy Gobert. Now, you could argue that he just missed it, <laughs> but it has to mean something that the seven foot dude is there at the rim versus a six one dude. Like, that contest matters. Now, I think more than any year of Rudy Gobert's career, it's more of a team award than an individual award. Like, when he was in Utah, Rudy Gobert was the only guy defensively. Here, He's got Jaden McDaniels, Anthony Edwards, even Mike Conley, high IQ, even though he's old, defender, and, and Carthony Towns bought in defensively as well. So, like, this, for me, this year felt like more of a team award than a Rudy Gobert award. This is something you see a lot, too, in Minnesota, if it is a 4-5 pick and roll. Because Minnesota's basically running two centers, they feel comfortable with just straight-up switching. A contest from Rudy Gobert, that play doesn't make him the defensive player of the year. I'll say that, but, you know, it is what it is. See, these are the type of things for me that make it really an impactful defensive possession. So we're going to see a screen from R.J. Bear here, right? And Anthony Edwards cannot get around this screen fast enough. So right here, you do have the drop from Rudy Gobert, right? But he also is playing the role man and the ball handler long enough for Anthony Edwards to recover. And these are the type of plays that it's not exclusive to Rudy Gobert. A lot of the great defensive bigs in basketball can make this play. But it's just showcases 
how good of a defender he is. And now you do get Anthony Edwards tag in the backside and then Car Anthony Towns helping over. And then boom, you do get a miss from RJ Barrett, but he ain't perfect. <laughs> we gonna show the highlights. We gonna show the lowlights. How did he just let Mitchell Robinson with the in and out to get to the basket? That's just you not expecting a man to make a move. I've been there before. Oh, okay. Let me stop acting like I can hoop. Kind of weird to watch the Knicks with Julius Randle again because my last, what, six months of memories, he wasn't on the on the team. <laughs> and I just feel like offensively, they look so much different with Julius Randle in the lineup versus not. Now, here's a place where Rudy Gobert doesn't hold a ton of value when you get a screen like this, where it really is on the defender, the perimeter defender, to be able to fight through these. But this is just good offense from the New York Knicks. You'll see it again here. Where Rudy Gobert is very rarely going to close out on a shot like this if the defender gets caught with that screen. Beautiful flair from Jalen Bronson, and it ends in a three. You, it's not much uh, better of a shot you could get if you Jalen Bronson slash the Knicks. And when I say it's more of a team defensive award this year, this is a possession I'm talking about because um, this is just phenomenal defense where, like, the Knicks are kind of like in the elbows thing, double screen here, there. Look at the communication where the Rudy Gobert get the switch and Carthen Towns got the back end. Rudy Gobert holds his own against Julius Randle. Now you get the slide on from Anthony Edwards and a heavily contested. Like that is a phenomenal defensive possession from the team. Now again, when you remember what the goal of drop coverage is, another perfectly played possession from 27, preventing RJ Barrett from getting the easy look at the rim. And it eventually leads to another Knicks turnover. That's uh, Carl Anthony Towns with some good hands. You also get a glimpse of what it's like when Rudy Gobert is not there on the back end. Where RJ Barrett can just get straight to this basket and basically get a non-contested layup. Now the first shift of Rudy Gobert is completely over with Nas Reed is on the court. And now I'm trying to reflect on that first shift. Did that feel like defensive player of the year type of impact? No, not necessarily. But sometimes on the defensive side of the ball, it's not what you do. It's what you don't allow to happen. And I feel like that is a lot of Rudy Gobert's case as one of the best defenders of this generation. Where I think we, I think I only saw one basket where the ball was scored at the rim or Rudy Gobert was at fault or near the basket. That was Mitchell Robinson in and out where he looked like he was back in high school again. But every other basket that was at the rim from the Knicks is a fast break Jalen Brunson, a fast break RJ Bear when Rudy Gobert was the one that turned the ball over. So again, sometimes it's about what you take away and I think Rudy Gobert is a perfect example of that. So we do get him in the action again. Prevents the basket at the rim from Menu quickly, who's just faster than Mike Conley. Negated the screen, got to the basket. Rudy Gobert is there. He's back in the action again. This time it's R.J. Beard and Isaiah Hardenstein. Rejects the screen, gets two feet in the paint. Missed the shot. Good contest. Also finished the lob on the other side of the floor. Good hands? Rudy Gobert? Huh? It's so interesting because if you look at the advanced stats, it will tell you that in isolation possessions, Rudy Gobert gave up less than one point per possession. I think it's like 0.90. And you wouldn't think that. But then you have possessions like this where he's in an isolation situation with Julius Randle. You know Julius Randle's a bad shot taker. He'll make him occasionally. It's a bad looking shot. But Rudy Gobert's advanced stats just got better because Julius Randle took that shot. He tried to make himself look like a DPO wine in this one, boy. <laughs> Instincts, execution, not so much. Super fun possession here. This is the same possession. Here he is. He jumps that, boom, nothing happens of it. Luckily, not a foul. We're going to get it to RJ in the corner. RJ is going to beat his man, Anthony Edwards, right? So look, there's a decision to be made from Rudy Gobert. You see he already loading up, so you know what his decision is. Protect the rim. But that also means that his man is wide open right there. RJ Bear has an opportunity to try to go up on the 7-1 shot blocker or dish it off to Mitchell Robinson, whose eyes are wide open. What do you think he decides to do? He makes the right play. But as you see Mike Conley's face, this is him not tagging the help or not tagging as the help. Now, it's not a lot he could do in this situation being 5'11 Mike Conley, but you can tell from his facial expression looking at the, at the uh, bench, yeah. But you got to make the decision if you're Rudy. And he went to prevent RJ from going to the basket and it leads to two regardless. And I think he makes that decision 99% of the time, right? Protect the rim at all costs. Don't trust that the player is gonna make the pass because you never really you never really know. Also just probably feels like the tag will be there from Mike Conley. And stuff like this is what makes him the best rim protecting center in basketball where there's nowhere for Jalen Brunson to get an open look. It leads to a tough shot from Julius Randle. And again, we talk about defense sometimes. It's not about what you do. It's about what you take away. 
and Rudy Gobert for the course of his career. And we're only looking at last year's stats, but the course of his career, one of the most eye-opening statistics with Rudy Gobert is the rim deterrence. And he was number one in the league at that again this season. And like I mentioned earlier, of his four DPO-wise, this one is probably the least impactful for me. But this was the stats from three years ago when I think he was at his peak when it comes to rim deterrence. The opposing uh, restricted area field goal percentage when the player is on was uh, was 60% for Rigo Bear. When he was off, it was 67. His his um, presence in the paint ended up having a difference of about 7%, which is elite. Isaiah Stewart was pretty good there too, huh? <laughs> okay, Isaiah Stewart. But this is the stat again that I'm referring to. The percentage of opposing shots in the restricted area when the player was on, only 25% of the shots were at the rim of Rudy Gobert was on when it was 32% when he was off. That is a minus 6.54. So he might feel like an overrated defender to some people, but the guys in the association are not going at the rim when he is down there. And if this is traversing every single year of his career, it cannot be a coincidence, right? These same stats don't hold up for other defenders across basketball. So it has to be the consistent thing. And the consistent thing is Rudy Gobert. Okay, enough of that. Let's go look at some playoffs. Because I think, again... After watching this and we looking at the numbers, I think we can agree that in the regular season, Rudy Gobert is an elite defender. But postseason is probably where a lot of people have their question. And a lot of that started in that one series versus the Clippers where Terrence Mann scored a million points. Terrence Mann? Terrence Mann scored a million points when the Clippers decided to get the center off the court and run five, five out ball. What would Rudy Gobert be able to do then? Because again, he's the best rim protector in basketball, right? He shouldn't be able to, or he can't hold his own on the perimeter. So let's go look at some of those games. I'm trying to get the game, y'all. I keep getting this message. Every time I click the game, I can watch almost every other game in history, it feels like. If they don't want me to watch this game. All right, so the only thing I can really get, it seems like, is all possessions and not the full game. Completely, completely okay. I think we can still do what we want to do with this. Um, but if y'all remember... The Clippers opted to completely run five out this entire game. Terrence Mann ended up with 39 points. And when, if you rewatch this game in its entirety, you will recognize that the idea or the philosophy that the Jazz decided to play with is, is if Terrence Mann beat us, he beats us. And Lord knows he did. Where you can watch, Rudy Gobert does not guard this man at all this entire game. He's 2 9 on, on this block the entire time. And if, if a defender gets beat, he's there to protect. And that left Terrence Mann open all game long. As you can see, look, look, he's there. And then he doesn't close out. And Terrence Mann starts off this game really hot. Again, he ends up at 39. But there are por there's a portion of this game where the Jazz are up by 20, 25 points, I want to say. And they lost. So let's see if I can get to that point. Dude, Terrence, man, I remember I was in the airport watching this game on my phone. He was so incredible. Even just this. Just go straight up. I'm, I'm one foot away from the basket. Let me just go straight up. I think my biggest gripe about this game for Rudy Gobert is that, ugh, look at Terrence Mann again. My biggest gripe about this game from Rudy Gobert is that he was 7-1 and he could not make the Clippers pay on the offensive side of the ball to prevent them from going five out. And that's kind of been the case throughout the entirety of Rudy Gobert's career where you can't necessarily trust him on the offensive side of the ball. If I'm a coach, if I'm a point guard, I don't feel comfortable throwing him the ball in a lot of cases unless he's literally a foot under the rim and as much as Rudy Gobert I've watched throughout my career there are still guards on his team that don't even trust him then the way they win this game is hey don't blow a 25 point lead but also find a way to make them pay for going small Gobert didn't kill the offensive glass and he didn't take a mismatch advantage and that is what killed this game for them in my opinion and on the contrary for Tyron Lue and company they saw that T-Man was hot and they decided hey there's nobody on this Jazz perimeter that we feel like can actually defend. So let's get two feet in and force Rudy Gobert to completely give that open look. And well, they did. And they did over and over and over again. It is so insane to rewatch this footage and just see them get two feet in the paint. Reggie Jackson really was getting to the basket at will. And, and never was a closeout from Rudy. I forgot the purpose of this video. I'm just reliving this great game from Terrence Mann and the Clippers, bro. Like, has he, he was playing at a whole, he gets the board and just coast to coast. Where was the transition defense, bro? He just had a night, bro. What a game. I got to watch this whole, whole game, bro. And you know how I mentioned how nobody on his team trusts him with the ball? 
Here, okay, we're going to watch Terrence Mann get his layup again. The very next possession down, I want you to watch Rudy Gobert offensively this entire possession, right? You see, he's open right there on the flash. He's open right there on the duck game, but instead they go for the three from Jordan Clarkson and he missed it. And he was there. He just doesn't have the trust of his teammates and for good reason. Two feet to the basket. Terrence Mann, three-point shot. <laughs> <laughs> like this game for me is what, what's the saying for it? The litmus test is that am I using that right? This game right here is like a litmus test for me when I'm talking to people to really determine about like how you watch the game of basketball. Because here's a possession where Rudy Gobert does not help at all. He is nowhere near the basket. He is trying to take away the one more from Nicholas Batum. And what do you think happens? Reggie Jackson has the lane and he gets. A bucket. So, if Rudy Gobert is not down low contesting Reggie Jackson get into the basket every time, then the Clippers win this game on layups. So the question is, would you rather Reggie Jackson slash a Paul George layup, or would you rather Terrence Mann, who was shooting in this regular season, in the regular season that year, he shot 41% on one attempt a, th a game from three-point range. Would you rather take your chances on, at that point, a year two unproven player hitting a bunch of three-pointers or layups and layups and layups? And I always, when, when I hear people talk about this game, I'm always just very confused about how they watch this game. Because if you take Rudy Gobert out of this game and you replace him with, I, I don't even remember who's still on this roster because this is four years ago, a random small four power forward and you try to match their smallness, well, guess what? The layups that you see or the, the, the paint uh, touches that you see just turn into layups. Like what happens this possession if Rudy Gobert is not here and instead he's glued to Terrence Mann? What happens this possession if he's glued to Terrence Mann? We completely take Terrence Mann out because we are denying ball as if he's prime Kobe B. Bryant. What happens this possession? It's a layup because you see, who, who is that? Um, uh, Jordan Clarkson wants to reach. If Rudy is not here, that is an open layup. But instead, Rudy is there, and it leads to a three-point shot from Patrick Beverly, of all people. <laughs> anyway, um, let's go to this year, though, because, again, that's what we're talking about, this year. And, and instead of going to a random game, I decided we're going to go to a game versus the Dallas Mavericks because, in my personal opinion, the series versus the Phoenix Suns was the best defensive series Rudy Gobert has had in his career. Even so much so that Kevin Durant called Rudy Gobert an all-world Hall of Fame defensive player. And, again, his other peers called him the most... Um, overrated defender, and this was only after game one. I thought again, if you want to see a Rudy Gobert masterclass, go rewatch game one. Um, and I want to say game four, I forget which game, I know for sure game one was one of them ones for Rudy in the entire time when he was switched on a Booker, when he was switched on Kevin Durant, he held his own. But Dallas, I obviously remember the big time shot to Luka Doncic. Hey, let's go rewatch one of those games. Because I do believe there is a conversation to be had. While I personally believe that Rudy Gobert is one of the best um, rim protects of this, this generation, I still do have my questions on whether or not that rim protection is as important when it comes to trying to win a championship. Like if I am trying to win a championship on the defensive side of the ball, would I rather have Bam Adebayo anchoring my defense? Would I rather have Rudy Gobert anchoring my defense? Would I rather have Anthony Davis anchoring my defense? I'd probably pick those first, that first dude or that last dude because they're more versatile. And I feel like that is what's the determinative factor when people question whether or not Rudy Gobert is a great defender. Because we should all agree that he is a great rim protector, but when you ask him to come outside of that paint, things can get questionable, even if the advanced stats say he's elite there too. So which game should we watch? Should we watch the game winner game? Is that game two? All I can pray is that with the amount of game footage we're using in this video, that the NBA doesn't get upset with me and they tell me I can't do it. That's, that's my biggest fear because I'm having way too much fun going through these archives, man. And this is also interesting because the other time people questioned Rudy Gobert's defensive ability in the playoffs was against James Harden and the Rockets. And obviously there are similarities in the way that the this current Dallas Mavericks team runs and that Houston Rockets team where you do have a primary ball handler in James Harden, Luka Doncic, that is so great in isolation. And their whole goal is to get a switch onto the big. So it is interesting to see it three, four years later that this is the type of team that might have caused Rudy Gobert to have more trouble. But let's watch the film. Five seconds left. What you going to do, Luka? What you going to do? The little give and go? And then the lob up to Gobert. Ooh, I mean, up, up to Daniel Gafford. That was kind of beautiful. That's making something out of nothing because the defense was great for basically 20 seconds there. 
with a little give and go. A little give and go action. Boom. Anthony Edwards is a little late. And then now Rudy Gobert has to make the decision. Do I try to stop Luka? And you expect, at least if you're Rudy Gobert, you're expecting the tag from Mike Conley here. It doesn't come and it leads to a lob. You see Mike Conley realize it a little bit too late. But again, there's not much he can do on a tag for a guy like Daniel Gaffer, who's one of the best live catchers in basketball. Like, you're going to see Gobert in a lot of actions because, well, the pick and roll game is what Dallas does a lot. Drop coverage. Jaden McDaniels plays great defense and causes a miss. Here, I think Gobert is providing too much help to the strong side. Let me put myself in this other corner. Um, expecting a spin. And Jaden McDaniels is playing him to that spin for Rudy Gobert. But Luka is a master in manipulation, and he gives it up to Daniel Gaffer for a bucket. Jaden McDaniels' screen navigation in this series, or I guess in his career, is so elite when you really think about it. Um, Luka's going to hit shots because he's one of the two best players in the world. But I'm watching this again for, what, the third time I've watched this game in my life, and I'm still amazed by the way he's getting around these screens. <laughs> one thing I like and dislike about Rudy Gobert is when he does make a big-time play like this, and, like, there's no recovery, man. To, to, he's always pissed. He's always so pissed at his teammates. Come on. <laughs> I just made a highlight block and they still score. This is a play I think Rudy Gobert has to trust Nas Reed a little bit more. Anthony Edwards struggles to get around the screen, so he's got the decision to make while he's playing drop coverage. Do I drop completely and prevent the lob? Do I step up on Kyrie Irving to try to prevent that? You see Nas, uh, 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 Nikhil Alexander-Walker try to do a little fake show, but you also see Nas Reed is on his backside, so if he's dropping to prevent... The, the role, man, he should trust one of his guys on the strong side to, to make a play. But instead, he doesn't. He doesn't commit either way, and it leads to a lot. Those are the type of miscues that matter in the postseason. This is the very next possession, right? Drop, 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 drop. He comes up instead of selling for the, the lob, and it leads to a Daniel Gaffer lob back-to-back -back possessions. Those are momentum killers. That crowd has been electric, but those are back-to-back -back buckets that you don't want to give up. Look at that boy, Ron. You know, Dan, you got for the gazelle in, in transition. 27 got him one. <laughs> oh, man. I think this is just the magic of Luka, where that lob, that dump-off lob has been dominating so much that Rudy Gobert gives up the layup because he's expecting to, the lob. Like, that. that is Luka being special. <laughs> Just special. And he was on with a bum leg this game. And this is happening a lot this game. I actually didn't remember it happening this many times. Where there's some action where you get two screens from Luka Doncic. And it's, it's forcing these three players in white to communicate and have a game plan. And we actually saw this a good amount when we watched that footage from the Knicks game. Where this exact type of screen, whether you want to call it um, elbows or maybe it's horns. because where he, No, it's elbows because where he started. Either way. Where these, these double screens come and these three dudes have to make decisions or already have a game plan on who's doing what. Where Luka being more of a threat than, no disrespect to like Jalen Brunson as a passer, causes so much confusion. And the backman, Carthony Towns, makes the wrong decision. He tries to go to PJ or has it's cut, stuck in the middle basically. Just see it one more time in real time without me pausing it. Where you see that you do see the tag from Mike. But that tag is only enough for Carthen and Towns supposed to come over and uh, it, it leads to another Luka Doncic assist. Now, this is a, one of the real examples of DPOY type of um, pressure you see from Rudy. No screen this time. And this time he plays both perfectly and prevents Luka from... Ju he jumps in the air to throw the pass. The pass is not there. But also Rudy Gobert takes away the shot and it leads to a basket for Minnesota. Like that is a DPOY type of play. But we are in the third quarter. <laughs> and that's the first time I've said that. So here's another one of those plays where it's Kyrie Irving, one of the best ball handlers of all time, one of the best finishers of all time, contested enough to cause a miss. Now here is where Rudy Gobert cannot hold his own. Where you see this, this action, they have been spamming this action the entire game, by the way. I, I don't remember it in real time. This, this being ran every single time down. But this is the first time when the ball handle, in this case Kyrie Irving, is going to attack, attack, attack. And Rudy Gobert, if he's backpedaling, he cannot keep up. And Kyrie Irving does Kyrie Irving stuff and draws the foul. So we know how this game ends, right? It's Luka Doncic step back three over Rudy Gobert. What I don't remember is that the possession before this, they actually got the Gobert switch on Luka. And in this one... It, it doesn't end the same way as the game winner. But then we do get the game winner, ladies and gentlemen, because we, we do get the game winner. And what a moment this was 
Um, I don't know if they ever came out and said it, but I, I still do not believe that the idea was to switch this screen. I don't think that's ever what they wanted to do. I thought that Dear Gliley set such a good screen that there was no way that he could recover, and it was too late for him to do anything. So they had to. You see, he could kind of, he kind of like he's second guessing. Do I need to step up? But Rudy Gobert is in that stance. They say. Let him go. He even do a hand like this. Gobert's on an island, man. And the last possession, they caused the miss. This time around, though, this time around, I don't, I don't know what to tell you, dog. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. What a beautiful, beautiful shot from, from Luka. And I honestly, the more I rewatch this, I still don't believe Rudy Gobert did a bad job. I honestly don't think there's nothing he could have done differently. The problem is anytime Rudy Gobert is in space, he looks like a gazelle that just fell out. His legs don't move like normal. So I felt like he held his own. This Lu this Luca step back is something that he's hit every player in the league with before. The closeout even, maybe not as great as you want. But that's Luca, And he going to talk that trash. He going to yell at him. He going to do everything. He going to talk to the crowd. It was beautiful. In, in real time, it was beautiful. Even watching it. Um, or May, June, July, August. Th three months later, it's still as incredible as it was the moment he hit it. Anyway. Um, I don't know if I did anything in this video of value to you. I just had a lot of fun watching this film. And my, my closing remarks is that, to me, the eye test does show Rudy Gobert being an elite level rim protector. And if the eye test says that, and the advanced stats show that times a million, then it must be true. The conversation shouldn't be if Rudy Gobert is a good defender, but instead, maybe there's a more, converse, more of a conversation on who would you rather anchor your defense? Because like I mentioned earlier, if you told me you'd rather have Bam Adebayo, I can't, com I can't complain. I can't deny that. You'd rather have Anthony Davis. I can't complain. I can't deny that. But one thing that is true is that Rudy Gobert is an amazing rim protector. Do I believe he's one of the two best defensive players of all time? Absolutely not. But I don't think there should ever be a conversation on whether or not he is one of the best defenders in basketball because, well... It's got to watch the, the, the game say so and the numbers say so. I don't know where the argument can be against it. Honestly, um, if you enjoyed the video, leave it a like, subscribe, and uh, yeah.